Warning, this video contains an image of advanced skin disease. Microbial mutagen. Item number, SCP-047. Object class, Keter. Special containment procedures. SCP-047 is to be contained in a 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters by 1 meter hermetically sealed storage box at all times. This box is to be locked in storage locker 047A inside P3 Secure Biohazard Lab 047B. Any entrance to inductivity inside 047B will be recorded by biometric scan, closed circuit camera, and redacted. Entry to 047B requires the authorization of the project manager, in addition to at least one O5 level clearance. SCP-047 is to be treated as a priority for contagious biohazard in all protocols, including mandatory quarantine if exposed. Suite Q-047 has been provided, adjunct to Lab 047B, for this purpose. In the event of outside contamination of SCP-047-1, Lockdown Protocol 047-01 Yersinia must be engaged. Description: SCP-047 is a heavily rusted, breached gas cylinder made of an iron, blank, alloy. When exposed to open air, the material of the cylinder evaporates slowly, producing a previously undocumented mutagenic gas. This gas has no effect on eukaryotic organisms, e.g. humans, but profoundly alters prokaryotes, showing preference for common human microbiota, the natural microorganisms that live on the skin and throughout the body. On rare occasions, these mutations produce a superbug, collectively known as SCP-047-1, a natural commensal with enhanced survivability and therefore opportunistic pathogenicity. The pattern of changes induced by SCP-047 suggests that these highly infectious microbes are, at least to some degree, selected for. Although the specifics of SCP-047-1 species are dependent on the base bacterium from which it is derived, there are several characteristics which appear to be generally consistent across all cases of SCP-047-1 mutation. Enhanced survivability in the bacterium's natural environment and similar environments. Full-spectrum antibiotic resistance. Increased reproduction rate and consumption of available material. Development of a sporulation ability in gram-positive bacteria. Increased ability to uptake, hold, and share plasmids, particularly in gram-negative bacteria. Increased transmission due to traits described above. SCP-047-1 samples are normally debilitating and virulent. However, compared to other Keter-class SCPs, it should be noted that SCP-047-1 have a relatively low mortality rate due to their action through mundane biological pathways. Several strains of bacteria have been selectively mutated by SCP-047. Mutation of bacteria in culture is possible, but the process appears to be much more effective with bacteria living on a human host. Generally, mutation of natural commensals for experimental purposes is encouraged. After the containment breach of January 30th, 2010, see Incident Report Yersinia-047-1, 2010, mutation of already pathogenic species is banned, and all existing samples must be destroyed. Three particular species of SCP-047-1 mutated bacteria are of note due to their involvement in the containment breach of blank, 2000, blank. Propionibacterium 047-A is a strain of the Propionibacterium acnes mutated by SCP-047. Pathogenicity, severe skin colonization around sebaceous glands, modification of skin pH to levels that become toxic to skin cells, massive inflammation and immune cell infiltration, eventual breakdown of skin structure, leading to sepsis. Transmission, transmitted by skin-to-skin -skin contact, can remain active on inorganic surfaces for up to five hours. Lethality, approximately 40% mortality rate, runs its course in two to six weeks. Very visible symptoms within five to 10 hours. Contagious within two to five hours. Handling, as soon as visible symptoms form, victims must be quarantined. Deceased victims should be incinerated. Streptococcus 047-C is a strain of Streptococcus midis mutated by SCP-047. Pathogenicity causes inflammation of the mouth and esophagus initially, leads to open sores in the mouth, which result in S-047-C entering the bloodstream and becoming septic. Death is usually due to infectious endocarditis. Transmission, droplet, can remain active indefinitely by sporulation. Lethality, approximately 35% mortality rate may become a recurring chronic condition if non-lethal. Handling. Subjects with any sign of mouth infection should be quarantined. Deceased victims should be incinerated. 
Clostridium 047-A is a strain of Clostridium difficile mutated by SCP-047. Pathogenicity unknown. C-047-A was developed from tissue culture and has never been exposed to a human. No samples remain in Foundation control. Transmission unknown. Presumably transmitted through fecal contamination, as with C. difficile, due to smaller, more robust spores, may also aerosolize with flatus. Effects of aerosol intake of C 047 047-A cannot be predicted. Lethality unknown. Presumed extremely high risk of destruction of endothelial lining of gastrointestinal tract, leading to inflammation, sepsis, toxic megacolon. Handling. Until further research has been done, victims should be quarantined and placed under 24-hour medical observation to develop functional diagnostics for this strain. Deceased victims should not be incinerated until adequate etiological research has been performed. Recovery Log 047 SCP-047 was recovered from the site Blank Secure Laboratory by a Foundation Biohazard Recovery Team in response to a full compromise situation on Blank, 1990 Blank. Testing logs indicate that the research team was attempting to contain data expunged in a class blank SCP stable pressure cylinder, which led to redacted, combining with redacted. A full molecular biological analysis of this is available in redacted. The initial release of gas when SCP-047 was structurally compromised was sufficient to cause a microbiotal bloom of uncounted species of SCP-047-1, killing all staff in the lab within blank hours. Exposed site blank staff obeyed standard Foundation quarantine slash containment protocol, and the infection was contained successfully.